Rodney Fox fights for his life. His opponent, a great white shark, dragged to the bottom of the ocean, scraped against rocks and coral. Rodney tussles with the shark while sustaining what is believed to be the most traumatic injuries by a shark attack survivor ever. Hit like and subscribe. This is Fierce. From an early age, Rodney Fox was drawn to the sea. Born in 1940 and growing up in Adelaide, South Australia, he regularly went fishing with his father. But his real passion was for spearfishing. As a teen, he was often rewarded for his efforts with fresh catches of lobster and fish, much to his family's delight. At the age of 22, he became the South Australian Spearfishing Champion, a title that earned him respect amongst fellow fishermen and one he was proud of. Things were going well for the youngster. A year later, he married the love of his life, Kay. But just four months after their wedding, their lives were about to be turned upside down. While competing in the 1963 South Australian Spearfishing Championships, he suffered the worst non-fatal shark attack in history. The extent of his injuries were so horrific, many consider it a miracle he survived. On a crisp December day, down by Aldinga Beach, just south of Adelaide, things were getting a bit tense. Sharks were on everyone's mind. Boats bobbed on the water, keeping a watchful eye on divers and their slippery trophies. It had been four long hours of competition, and the sea now told a grim tale, with a trail of fishy blood and guts drifting away on the outgoing tide. If any sharks were lurking nearby, that scent buffet was sure to get their attention. Out there, you had 40 folks chasing underwater glory, and the clock was ticking. Just one hour left in the championship. Rodney had a clear goal, bag a dusky Morwong fish to secure his back-to-back -back win. He decided to take the plunge, venturing beyond the protective reef. The water was about 60 feet deep, and as Rodney went down, there was a weird stillness in the water, like the calm before a storm. Then, bam, it hit him like a freight train. A massive great white shark slammed into his left side, knocking the wind out of him and sending him hurtling through the water like a human torpedo. Rodney knew exactly what was happening. He could feel those razor-sharp teeth clamping down hard. His mask got ripped away, and his world turned into a blurry nightmare. As Rodney's body was ruthlessly compressed, his insides shifted violently, and the precious air dwindled rapidly. Dragged 30 feet beneath the turbulent surface, the world above dimmed, and the cold abyss enveloped him. Amidst this underwater turmoil, he frantically groped in the darkness, driven by a desperate quest to locate the shark's eye, a whispered strategy he had recently discussed with a friend. His trembling fingers finally found their target, plunging into the shark's eye socket with a surge of adrenaline-fueled determination. Instantly, the shark relinquished its grip, yet as the relentless pressure receded, it unleashed a wave of excruciating pain coursing through Rodney's battered body. In a final bid to ward off the relentless predator, he pushed with his right hand, only to find it devoured by the shark's gaping maw. But Rodney's sole instinct was survival. He had to claw his way back to the surface, to the life-sustaining breaths that beckoned above. Yet lurking just behind, the shark pursued him relentlessly, its snout nipping at his flippers. It knew its quarry was wounded, and hunger fueled its relentless pursuit. As Rodney erupted through the water surface, greedily inhaling life-saving breaths, he sensed the sandpaper-like rasp of the shark's skin brushing against its leg. He knew it was returning for a second onslaught. Swiftly, before the predator could swivel and strike once more, Rodney latched onto its dorsal side, engaging in an adrenaline-charged wrestle with the colossal great white. With sheer determination, Rodney clung to the shark's body, aware that as long as he held on, its formidable jaws wouldn't clamp down on him. Below the surface, a fierce underwater struggle unfolded. They brushed perilously against jagged rocks and tangled in swaying seaweed, the battleground for their life-and-death duel. Yet as seconds ticked away, Rodney's precious air reserves dwindled once more. Reluctantly, he released his tenacious grip, making a desperate dash for the surface. As he broke the surface and into the open air, the cool breeze caressed his face, and he gulped in life-sustaining oxygen. With his remaining strength, Rodney managed to force out a bone-chilling cry, a single word that still reverberates with terror in his memory. Shark! 
and what he witnessed next as he gazed upon the unfathomable depths would forever haunt his dreams. Through the red cloud of his own blood, he saw the shark's head emerge right next to his own blood-soaked body. Its jaws were open, its snout rounded and gray. A feeling of indescribable terror flooded his veins. Rodney kicked at it for all that he was worth. It rushed at him once more, but missed him by millimeters. Instead, it grabbed a mouthful of Rodney's float, which was attached to his waist. The shark thrashed its head from side to side and dived deep underwater, dragging Rodney with it. Pulled by the rope attached to the float inside the shark's mouth, Rodney felt he was going to drown. As he was pulled for 10 or 12 meters, he thought how unfair it would be to die by drowning, having survived the initial attack. He fumbled with the belt around his waist, trying desperately to break free from the rope, but his fingers weren't working properly. He couldn't see clearly, and he was losing huge amounts of blood. Then, miraculously, the rope suddenly snapped under the pressure. As he reached the air, a boat was waiting for him. The crew hauled him on board, but they knew not to take off his wetsuit. It was the only thing holding him together. When they made it to dry land, Rodney was rushed to the hospital in Adelaide in a private car. The ambulance met them en route. The speed at which he received treatment was key to his survival. He was inside the hospital receiving treatment within an hour of the attack. The extent of Rodney's injuries would normally be considered unsurvivable. It took some time for Rodney to overcome his fear of sharks. Although he competed in the following year's spearfishing championships again and scored the highest points in three of the four categories, he was still struggling to keep his fear at bay. A renowned fisherman, Alf Dean, who held the record for catching the largest fish with rod and line, took Rodney out fishing with him one day. Alf expertly caught five sharks that day and hauled them onto dry land to show off his catch. But Rodney was less than impressed. Seeing the animals dead on the sand wasn't what he wanted. He didn't want revenge on the sharks. He wanted to understand them. After a visit to Adelaide Zoo with his wife Kay and seeing a caged lion, he came up with an idea to build a cage that could be lowered into the water to view sharks safely. With the metal bars protecting him from the shark's powerful jaws, he would be able to observe them up close and maybe come to terms with what happened to him. And so, shark cage diving was born. Rodney filmed the sharks underwater. It was the first time this had been done and attracted global attention. But seeing the animals through the camera lens and behind the safety of the metal bars, Rodney, and indeed the world, could see that sharks weren't the fearsome, cold-blooded killers they had been made out to be. In fact, they were extremely cautious animals that were more fascinated by the bait dangling in the water than the humans in the cage. News spread around the world of Rodney's invention. It was a novel idea that sparked enthusiasm from Steven Spielberg, who wanted to capture live footage of sharks for his new movie, Jaws. Rodney was approached by an American dive travel company who wanted to offer their clients the ultimate shark experience and take them on shark cage diving tours. So from Rodney's experimental cage diving, a whole new tourism industry was born, an industry that is still incredibly popular today. And now, more than half a century later, and with his life devoted to sharks, Rodney is reminded every day of the incident that changed his life forever. A piece of the shark's tooth is still embedded in his wrist.